Uh, sorry about that, guys. My uh, phone closed because, you know, storage kind of ran out on it. But, hey, you know what? I said I was going to finish it, and I am. As Astro's out the fossilized bird. I'm kind of going to have to be in a rush now. Immediately, Agatha's Crobat is ready for another go. And so is Ash here. Oh, man. This is going to be ridiculous. So, as uh, Crobat now comes in, but this time for a, uh, wait, it can't really, yeah, it can still poison it, but it's going to have to do it on the down low. This time it comes in for another, cr for another cross poison, but thankfully Ash was waiting for this. He told Aerodactyl to use Thunder Fang and bit, uh, and, th and Aerodactyl bit Crobat on one of its major wings. Uh-oh, that's bad. And immediately Aerodactyl would go and use Stone Edge to hit Crobat with super effective damage. Knocking out that Crobat. Because that's the thing. You have to go in there ready for that Crobat. Because if you don't, your Pokemon's going to get sweet. So yeah, Crobat got taken out. Time for number three, actually. Heh. <laughs> Marowak. Let's go. As now, Mar the Marowak hits the ground. This time, Fire and Ghost. Ash already, thankfully, already knew uh, because Agatha was like half Ghost type. But still... He took out two of her poison types already. but So she may resort to using her ghost type Pokemon now. Because she knows for a fact she's saving Gengar, her literal third uh, ghost and poison type Pokemon for last. So yeah, that's a good thing. <sighs> Alright, so with that, being, with that being said, and now what's going on into the ghost types. As now, uh, Marowak is using Cursed Bone, basically. So... Here it comes by now, uh, rushing at Aerodactyl and hitting it with a lot of damage. But then Agatha uses the move Curse, causing Marowak to lose some of his HP in order to curse Aerodactyl. But Ash, immediately seeing what, the, what this is going to do, immediately uses Stone Edge yet again and hits Marowak, capitalizing on the, on the damage it took from itself, knocking out Marowak. But now the curse is inflicted on uh, Aerodactyl. Great. Yeah. Agatha's got some crazy, man, teams and even more insane moves. So let's move on. Uh, okay, that's third. Now time for our fourth Pokemon. Miss Magius. As Miss Magius comes out, Ash's Aerodactyl can feel the curse inflicted on it. And all Agatha really did was just use Willow, was use Willow Wisp and burned Aerodactyl. Now Aerodactyl is burned along with being inflicted by curse. Agatha is not letting up here. And then she uses the move, uh, Hex. Wait, no, she uses Confuse right now. So, um, it's Confused, Burned, and Cursed. So Ash immediately tried to use the move Crunch, but instead Aerodactyl ended up hurting itself. And the Curse and the Burn was just too much, and Aerodactyl, like, got knocked out because of it. Oh my gosh. Agatha may look like she's on the losing front, but do not undermine her. She is very, very strong. So Ash immediately knew what he had to do. So calling back Aerodactyl, he threw in his next Pokemon. <sighs> Fine. Nido King, I choose you. Oof. As as Ash sends in his Nido King, Agatha already knows what to do. And she and she uses Shadow Sneak to get behind Nido King. And even though she gets some damage to it, she also uses the move Destiny Bond. As Ash would uh tell it to tell Nido King to use um, Thunder Punch and hitting Miss Magius for a lot of damage. But still, Destiny Bond was already used. Oh, that's not good. As now, yeah, Agatha's really bringing her A-game here. As immediately, Ash knew that Nido King was eventually going to have to get knocked out anyway. So he decides to go full power and use, and use his Mega Horn on uh, Miss Magius and ends up knocking it out. But because of the Destiny Bond, it takes Nido King directly out with it. So bringing it down to Agatha, Agatha final two Pokemon and Ash's three. Like I said, Ash may look like he could be on the losing front, but that can change really quickly. Wait, no. Uh, Agatha may look like she's on the losing front, but she has she's a master Pokemon strategist. She knows exactly what to do. As they both recall back their Pokemon, Ash would bring up his next Pokeball. <laughs> Gengar, I choose you. Go, Banette. Gengar versus Banette. 
Now, guys, this is where the battle is going to be even more intense because, yet again, Agatha uses another Destiny Bond strategy. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Well, screw, well, screw it. Ash j just uses shad Shadow Ball and... Uh, Uses Shadow Ball after Shadow Ball, hitting Bennett for major damage, and Agatha just takes it. She's not even trying to fight back because she knows this is going to hinder Ash as much as possible. And finally, when Ash does take down the Bennett, Gengar, like before, gets brought down with it. Are you kidding me? So now Ash is down to only two Pokemon left, and he knows who's, who his starter Pokemon is, and is Ash going to risk throwing that Pokemon out? Ash says no, because he brought one member that he knew Agatha could definitely not hit. This is a high risk, um, high reward type of move that he's pulling, but hopefully it works. <sighs> Snorlax, I choose you! Go Gengar! That's her last Pokemon. Agatha's last Pokemon. As now, the two Pokemon would hit the stadium. Agatha's surprised. Ash brought a normal type to fight her? Yes. Ash knew either her last Pokemon knew her last Pokemon would be Gengar, because Professor Oak told him about it. And Snorlax here was the high risk, high reward situation. She knows that Gengar most definitely has a poison move, but thanks to Snorlax's ability, immunity, it can't take poison damage. Well, it can, but it cannot be poisoned. Uh like Agatha said, oh, I see what you're doing now. But that doesn't mean Snorlax only only has normal type moves. Snorlax has moves that can damage Gengar. And Agatha won't risk using another Destiny Bond to lose her last Pokemon. No, you're right, I won't. But still, it this this match was intent and greatly fun. I do clap for you on that one, young man. I really do. As she just taps her staff on the ground a few times. But let's cut this show to the to let's get to the end of this. Right. As Ash would try to use Earthquake, but up, oh, Gengar has the ability to levitate. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, it's not going to be that easy. Of course it isn't. Which is why he prepared for this instead. What? Snorlax, you psychic! Up, uh, and immediately, Snorlax will lift up Gengar and throw it to the ground. Like, now bring it toward you. Heh, <laughs> Shadow Ball! And immediately, Snorlax would use Shadow Ball. Agatha would, can only use Sludge Bomb and Psychic on Snorlax, but it's actually taking those very well. And since Snorlax can't be poisoned due to its immunity abil immune ability, yeah, sadly, Agatha's going to lose this one here. So after a grievous battle for a few minutes, Snorlax would end up taking out Gengar, and Ash would, be, would have defeated the third Elite Four member. Agatha would, would tap her staff on the floor for Ash as to mimic clapping. Congratulations, young man. You've beaten... The uh, me. But, the last Elite Four member is the champion, so, so once you beat him, you will have beaten all of us. So I congratulate you ahead of time. But he's going to be the toughest and strongest one you've faced so far. Are you ready for that challenge, young man? Yes. I have to be. As now, within the last few days, Ash prepares his, Ash prepares his Pokemon. Because it's time to face Lance. The Dragon Master. Let's get it ready, y'all. Let's do this. Time to finish this once and for all. <sighs> now, guys, this is the, the moment you've all been waiting for. Ash kind of had doubts going into this battle because this is the champion here. Lance, the Dragon Master. For a moment, he doubted himself, but Ash had on, on, on his days off to prepare for this battle. Misty... Brock, heck, all the gym leaders, Red, Blue, and Gary, Delia, Misty, I, I think I said Misty Brock, yeah. Everyone showed up and they told Ash that, that he's got this. So Ash, for the, for the days off that he had to for the rest of this battle, he didn't do any major training. Him and his Pokemon just relaxed. He, and they had asked him what Poke Pokemon was he going to use. Well, Ash knew he was bringing Mew and Mewtwo into the fight, but for the rest of them, he really doesn't know. <laughs> but, he's going to do something he hasn't done in a long time. He's going to wing it. And if he wins, then he wins. But if he doesn't, it just wasn't meant to be. 
and Red is proud of his son to have come this far. Knowing when to train, knowing when to train, and knowing when to relax is something a Pokemon trainer should always know. Never push your Pokemon. Never push your Pokemon too hard. So for the next two, three days, Ash and all of his Pokemon in the ranch just relax. And honestly, no one knows what Pokemon he picked. He just grabbed the, po the six Pokeballs and headed out. And finally, they met in the stadium. Ash and Lance. This is where it was going to end. Lance and Ash meet in the middle of, of the arena. And they shake hands. Lance congratulates Ash on making it this far. I think I should have Ash in the Let's Go um, attire as well. You know what? I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to see if I can find Ash in a Let's Go attire. If I can, then I'll do that. I would have used Let's Go Lance as well. I mean, well, this is kind of Let's Go Lance, but at a different angle. You know what? They're both going to be Let's, Let's Go versions. All right, I'll be right back, y'all. With that being said, the battle is set to begin. Both teams are incredibly... Ner both Ash is incredibly nervous, but still, he steals his nerves. And the look in his eyes, like his father's, come right back to him. As now, Ash... Here's his heartbeat, and then he can feel it. He knows what's going on. He will win. As Lance fl uh, flaps his cape and says, this is your final challenge. Uh, defeat me and prove uh, your, uh, your worthiness to be crowned champion of Kanto. Ash just looks back without saying anything. As he brings his Pokeball forward. Yeah. Let us begin! And they f immediately throw out their, their Pokemon. Let's do this. And to start it all off, Lance would already start by throwing out... Oh, wait, hold on. Let me make sure I got all the team members ready. You know what? Screw it. Yeah. Ash would immediately throw out, would immediately throw out Venusaur. But he says nothing. And Lance would throw out his Kingdra. As both trainers throw out their Pokemon. Immediately, the battle were to begin. Kingdra, use Ice Beam! Ash would say nothing, as Venusaur would power up a Solar Beam and fire it directly at Kingdra. The Ice Beam and Solar Beam contend with each other, but the Solar Beam is overpowering it, as it immediately hits Kingdra for massive damage. And next thing you know, Venusaur would be using Sludge Bomb without the command of its trainer. What is going on? It's like the same thing that happened with Gary. And immediately as Kingdra gets hit, it gets poisoned. Oh man. As now, uh, once again, Lance would call for an ice beam. This time, Venusaur can't dodge so cleanly. And it would actually get hit uh, by one of its legs, freezing it to the ground. And Lance would use a dragon pulse, firing off a very powerful dragon energy blast at Venusaur. Hitting it dead on. But Venusaur is completely fine. Now this time, Venusaur uses Power Whip and hits Kingdra for massive damage. But Kingdra isn't going down because it uses Recover. Heh. So as just... So Venusaur then runs up and tackles Kingdra with its whole body using Giga Drain. Draining Kingdra of its power. Uh-oh, that's not good. This time, uh, Lance would immediately say you Ice Beam uh, yet again. And now Venusaur will be powering up a, another solar beam, firing at full power. This time the beam go, goes past each other, hitting both parties with full power. Venusaur being encased in ice. Kingdra being hurt really bad by the laser. As both Pokemon would have swirls in their eyes as they're both knocked out from the humming blows. One for one. Dang. This is actually very, in very intense. As now, woo! I, man, they, no one even knows what to say here. A double KO in the first bout as Ash recalls back his Venusaur, putting the Pokeball up to his head. You did good, my friend. Let us take care of the rest. Kingdra, valiant work, like always. Take yourself a good rest. As Lance would unsheathe his next Pokeball, and Ash would do the same. As now, they would throw out their next Pokemon. Go, Executor! As Ash would throw out his next Pokemon. 
Blastoise versus Executor. Now, obviously, this is a, a bad matchup, but for Ash, not really. And you guys are about to see why. Lance would immediately... Ash would immediately start start using uh, skull bashes to boost to boost its defense, and Lance on the other on the other side would be using dragon dance after dragon dance. Oh man, this is ter this is gonna be insane here, and Ash keeps doing to boost all of its defenses because heck, you're, we're gonna have to tank a lot of damage here if we want to take out this Executor, and doing like with I yep so boosting its defense all the way. Now Lance was ready. Use wood hammer and immediately executor would rush up and like two giant tree logs would grow would grow um in place of like where uh, at the end of its neck where it would be in place of its on in place of, of what would be giant wood arms as it would come and punch blastoise like direct directly on its shell but blastoise has high defense now because of the um you know constant uh tucking its head in for skull bashes so, but thank, but crazy enough, um, you know, because Woodhammer does have recoil damage. So sadly, you know, Executor t does take recoil, but then uh, Blastoise will come out and hit Executor in one of its many heads, causing Executor to actually go back. And now Ash would immediately call for an I for an ice beam, shooting directly at um, Executor. And hitting it for massive damage, because remember, Executor is a grass, is a grass and dragon type. Oh no! And this because this is a lowland Executor, so it's gonna take double damage now. And crazy enough, perfect. Ash got the frozen, so Ash keeps using Ice Beam after Ice Beam, and but to end it all off, Ash ends up using one final Skull Bash to break the ice that uh, Executor is encased in on the fun on one of its many heads again to knock it out. Heh, <laughs> perfect. Just perfect. As as Lance would now recall back his Executor, as now he'll prepare his next Pokeball as he throws out his next Pokemon. Go, Hydreigon! Now, Blastoise here would be kind of damaged from the bad blows because of Executor, but still... And yes, Hydreigon. Lance has a Hydreigon, as we've seen in the anime. So I decided to give him to give to give him his Hydreigon now. And immediately, Ash tries to use Ice Beam, but Hydreigon is way too fast, coming behind um, <coughs> Blastoise and straight up using a fun and using a Thunder Fang, biting Blastoise on on its head for super effective damage, and then using Outrage, and just knocking Blastoise completely out. It's way too fast. And then, boom, Blastoise hit the ground. Two for two. It's evened up. But Ash, with this next Pokemon, will make sure to even make sure he gets on top, and hopefully he he keeps it that way. Because now he knows, man, this is gonna be a lot. This is gonna be very rough. Oh, jeez. Okay, let's go. Snorlax. Wait. Oh yeah. Ash still saying nothing. By the way, what we'll throw out Snorlax? Now, these two tanky Pokemon hit the battlefield, and now it's time to capitalize on it. Now, this is a, for a t an insane battle, because you got, oh my gosh, an unstoppable Pokemon versus, like, an unstoppable, eh, an impenetrable wall versus an unstoppable force. This is nuts. <coughs> this battle would drag on for, like, man, for, like, almost an hour. So, and because I mean, the one would attack just for the other, and it seemed like the other would gain the advantage just for the other to get back on top again. Pause on that one. And what do I mean by that? Hydreigon would use Outrage after Outrage just for Snorlax to come back up and use Ice Punch to hit Hydreigon very hard, and then use Body Slam just for Hydreigon to use Thunder Fang, and, not, and that not being it, because, it, because then it used Fire Blast to hit Snorlax, only for Snorlax to to come to like come with a vengeance and use Giga Impact, and also like uh hold on, I'm trying to think of what else in that moment. Oh yeah, it would also like uh, because Ash does change his moves around from time to time. He also uses Drain Punch to gain energy back as well. So this battle would just be an intense one for the ages. Until like finally both Pokemon are extremely winded. 
as Lance would call for a final outrage on <coughs> Snorlax. And uh, because of the fatigue from earlier, Hydreigon would try to call for its outrage as Ash would call for its ice punch on both hands. And Snorlax would be ready for it as Hydreigon rushes at Snorlax. Its confusion would, would come in as Hydreigon would hurt itself in the process. And Ash would say, Now Snorlax, do it! As Snorlax would clash both of its fists together, just like what Paul, Paul's Electivire did back in the anime, and hit Hydreigon with two of its fists, hitting as hard as it possibly can, trying to send it all the way back. And thankfully, eventually, Hydreigon gets sunk back, flying, I mean, into the wall being knocked out. That battle lasted too long, and these Pokemon had so much energy in reserve. Snorlax is completely exhausted, and Lance will recall back um, Hydreigon, thanking it for, for the battle. Hydreigon is a powerful dragon, and Ash saw with Snorlax being as tired as it is, Snorlax doesn't, he'll, he doesn't think Snorlax can last a lot longer. <laughs> Go, Dragalge! Lance already knew throwing out Dragalge was just overkill at this point. But still, having only three Pokemon left is not the best or ideal situation for it. But still, heh, might as well. Use Draco Meteor! And Ash had called for Snorlax to use Giga Impact, break through all those Meteors, and hit Dragalge at full power. Snorlax called upon its full power and tried to charge through the Draco Meteors, but it just couldn't. Being hit with the Meteors on impact, causing Snorlax to be knocked out. Oof. Snorlax just couldn't take it anymore. And sadly, it was enough. Ash recalling back Snorlax, thanking it for the battle. And now, Ash knew he had to use it. The Pokemon he started off with. Heh. <laughs> this is going to be fun. As Ash would wind back his Cherish Ball. Haven't, haven't used this Pokemon in a, in, a, in a battle for a while. Well, he has, but just not in a major one like this. Throws out his Mew. Now this was going to be intense. As now Dragalge just used Poison and Dragon type moves. But Mew, simple. Mew just used a, a Psychic. No. Yeah, Mew used a Psychic to hit Dragalge for super effective damage. And then throwing a Moonblast at him. And then finally, one Ice Beam was all it took, and Dragalge was out. Lance knew that with Mew, he had to literally throw out everything he had. So with this Pokemon, he's going to give it his all. And you better believe he will. As Ash immediately recalls Mew to not waste Mew's energy. Because Lance threw out his next Pokemon, Charizard! Let's get to work! And Ash would find, would fulfill his promise in throwing out a strong Pokemon. Up oh, one sec, guys. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. I was getting a phone call. But anyway, we're back now. And Ash fulfilling his promise to Mute throws out Mewtwo. Mewtwo is raring to go for this fight. Of course, Mewtwo trained with Ash's Pokemon, you know, getting the good battles that he thrilled. But he wanted to battle against an elite member. The elite force was be the strongest of the region, right? So why not? And Lance just said. Well, if you're using a Pokemon like this, we might as well not even not even hold back. Let's go all out from the start. Really? As Lance would immediately bring up something from under his cloak. A necklace with a keystone. Wait, a keystone? Yes, sir! As Lance would mega evolve his Charizard into Mega Charizard X. And Mewtwo is excited. It gets to face a mega Pokemon. As Mewtwo tell, like, looks at Ash and nods. Let's do it. Ash just says, okay. Mewtwo, your hidden power! As Mewtwo complete, completely uses all of its energy. As uh, um, the crystal from before unleashes on its body. One sec, let me show you guys real quick. <clears throat> As Mewtwo would transform into its shadow form. Yes, this is Shadow Mew this is uh, Shadow Mewtwo, but it's the shiny version of Shadow Mewtwo. You guys get it? It's all the way white instead of completely blacked out. I just thought it would be a good contrast to, to a shiny form. 
And Ash will, and Mewtwo will look at Ash. We're not done yet, are we? Nope. Greninja! Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. I'm used to... Oh, my God. I just messed that whole thing up. I'm dumb. I am so stupid. Mewtwo! Together! Mega Evolve! As Mewtwo would say, which one? Well, you're... Uh, well, since Charizard, since Charizard has a form, and it's X, go with the Y. You got it. Like, as Mewtwo would, 